In part one, we conducted some experiments to demonstrate what happens when something falls onto a similar structure that once supported it. So is it possible to have a total gravitational collapse of a structure? Yes. The French use a demolition system that uses gravity to take down a building called Varinage. This system is suitable for masonry structures, but not for steel frame structures like the Twin Towers. Notice the following as you watch. First, notice that it is pulled from about the center of the structure and uses Newton's third law to destroy both the top and the bottom simultaneously. Second, notice how you can follow the roof lines just about all the way down, unlike the Twin Towers. Third, notice that there is a clear, definite drop first and then a puff of debris as the upper block impacts the lower floor, but not any ripples or puffs first, followed by the drop. Fourth, careful measurements of the speed has confirmed that indeed there is a jolt or deceleration the moment the top block hits the floor below. This is an example of a true gravity collapse. Finally, notice the falling mass stayed within the building footprint impacting the floors below, unlike the Twin Towers, where much of the mass was thrown outward and never even impacted the lower tower at all. How about a known controlled demolition? It looks about the same, but it is not, for explosives are used to assist the fall. Notice the puffs of smokes about the same time as the initial drop. And while I cannot say for sure that all controlled demolitions will not experience a jolt, I can say that all gravity collapses must experience a jolt in order to follow physical laws. World Trade Center 7 was never hit by an airplane, but it fell late on September 11th. It not only accelerated without any jolt whatsoever, but remarkably it fell at total free fall for over 100 feet of its fall. This means that some other force had to have removed all supports virtually simultaneously, moving them out of the way or it would not accelerate freely. A fire-induced progressive global collapse as claimed by NIST is totally impossible because it defies the laws of physics. There is a reason why NIST removed three times from their draft report the phrase that indicated that their analysis was consistent with physical principles before issuing their final report. By removing this phrase, in effect, their conclusion of the world's first case of thermal expansion leading to a progressive global collapse does not follow the fundamental laws of physics and is therefore wrong. My experiments are simple, but like Feynman's ice water used for the space shuttle, they demonstrate fundamental principles. The media, the government, and the so-called experts are lying about 9-11, playing us as fools. But the laws of physics cannot be fooled, nor do they care what everybody thinks or says. What was demonstrated by experiment is, one, there is a jolt when the upper structure impacts a lower structure and a naturally falling block will not uniformly accelerate. Two, the upper structure will not destroy a lower structure without destroying itself in the process. And three, the crush down of the lower structure can be virtually simultaneous with the crush up of the upper structure, contrary to the official hypothesis. The fact that the upper block of the World Trade Center was observed to uniformly speed up cannot be explained with a natural gravitational collapse. Since the NIST explanations do not match their own experiments, it's wrong. Since Professor Bazant's hypothesis does not match experiment, it's wrong. And since the NIST assumption that collapse is inevitable does not match reality, it's wrong. What you are observing are rapidly timed explosives blowing out the supporting structure, allowing the roof to accelerate. Explosives also accounts for all other evidence found, such as the eutectic steel found by FEMA, the iron microspheres found by the USGS, and the high explosive active nanothermite found in the dust, none of which were addressed by NIST. The controlled demolition hypothesis where both the upper and lower part of the towers were destroyed with rapidly timed explosives is the only explanation that can be supported by experiment it matches all known evidence and the laws of physics. Dismissive arguments such as, who would have put the explosives there? Why was it done? Or statements like, somebody would have talked, 
simply cannot trump the fundamental laws of physics of what must have happened. So how can you tell if it's a natural gravity collapse? Simple, just look for the jolts. If there are no jolts, then it's not a natural gravity collapse. And if it's not a natural gravity collapse, then it's a man-made demolition. And if it's a man-made demolition, then it was planned before 9-11. And if it was planned before 9-11, then something is very, very wrong. And finally, if you think I'm wrong, then prove me wrong with experiments. Fortunately for the real terrorists, the average person is just not comfortable with questions about 9-11, and they dismiss the physics as just a conspiracy theory or ignore it completely, not wanting to get involved. Or, like in the time of Galileo, they laugh and ridicule those who do know, and in fact are helping to cover the crime of the century. But real Americans are not afraid to ask legitimate questions about what really happened to our fellow citizens. Always remember the thousands of people that were intentionally murdered in the unnatural acceleration of the towers that defy the law of physics without assistance from explosives. Each time 9-11 is mentioned as another excuse to take away your freedoms or justify another war.